whether the Controller General of Customs, Colonel Hamid Ali, should appear before the Senate uh, plenary in his uh, customs uniform, which is very reluctant to do because he has not been wearing the uniform since he was appointed to that post in 2015. Now, the issue can be looked at at different levels. Uh, administratively, the reason why he is not wearing the uniform, as we understand from media reports by us at the time, was that he made it one of the conditions for accepting the position. And the president accepted. So that is the basis why he has not been wearing the uniform. Uh, Mr. C.G., if you look at Section 2 of the Customs Act, it defines the officer. And that definition is so comprehensive to include the Controller General. And I believe, too, sir, that there are certain things the officer takes for granted, which includes wearing uniform. So if that's what they should take for granted, I believe as the number one custom officer, you should lead by example. Legally, I have seen opinions by various lawyers saying there is nowhere where the law specifically says that the head of customs must wear his uniform. But of course that is because the situation is anomalous. Usually the people who get to become CG of customs are customs officers who rise through the ranks. They have been wearing their uniform all along and any customs officer who becomes a controller general will be very glad to continue wearing his uniform with the necessary rank on his shoulder. But here we have a situation where a non-customs officer was appointed the controller general. So we now refer to tradition. And again, if we refer to tradition, the evidence is contradictory. Because uh, back in the 1980s, uh, Dr. Bello Haluru Mohammed was appointed the director of custom. Later it became controller general. He was a civilian, a veterinary doctor. But he began to wear the customs uniform. Then there was a time that a serving military officer was appointed the controller general of custom, Brigadier General Samuel Angu. And he continued to wear his military uh, uniform. Then there were other military officers that headed other agencies, like when the late Major General Musa Bamayi was the chairman of the Drug Law Enforcement Agency. He continued to wear his military uniform. And then there was a time when a retired Army General, Major General Antony Haladu Hanania, was made the co-marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps. He wore the uniform of the Federal Road Safety Corps. So therefore, one cannot say precisely uh, what is the tradition in this matter. However, the main issue now, as I see it, if we look at the context here, is that the Senate were very angry with the policy that Ali was proposing, which is virtually to stop cars at random all over the country, and if they can't show uh, evidence of payment of duty, he will seize the vehicles. The senators are angry, and I think most Nigerians are also very angry with that uh, policy. Now, the Controller General was very stubborn in the matter because the Senate passed a resolution saying he should suspend the policy pending more engagement. He instead issued another circular and said he was going ahead. So I think the senators were angry and they also upped the ante. They said he should appear before them and he must wear uh, his uniform. So really it became just an ego uh, uh, contest between them. But now that the policy has been suspended, which is the most important thing, I think the best way going forward is please uh, let us reduce heat in the polity. Let the senators stand down their insistence that he must appear at their plenary in uniform. Because even if he appears at their plenary, he will now say the policy has been suspended pending stakeholder engagement. So what is the use of creating so much heat over this matter. So I think the best way to go forward is to stand down that invitation for now.